Hey, this is Chuck Marshall yeah. with Metalani, and I'm talking to John Schaefer from Iced Earth. How you doing, John? Good, man. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, the Incorruptible Tour is uh, just about to wrap up. You guys got a couple more dates. Uh, and then, you know, so far the, all the reviews I've seen have been really positive. Fans yeah. have been super happy with the shows. Yeah. The albums have been doing great. If you could use one word to uh, describe the tour so far, what would that be and why? Oh, man, one word. <laughs> I can't, I really can't describe it in one word, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's been great. Yeah. It's been great. The fan base is fired up and, uh, we had a lot of sold out shows and there's just, it's been a really cool, you know, the people that are coming to the shows are really dedicated fans, yeah. you know, and that's a beautiful thing. So. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Everybody is like so stoked and excited and like everything that I read, everyone's just like dying and I, I can't wait to see this show. Yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> a little bit disappointed in the numbers here. Um, I'm not sure what happened. There's been a couple where it seems like there was yeah. no promotion, you know, but the majority of them have been really good. So. Well, it's Wednesday, you know, hump day. Yeah, <laughs> that shouldn't really matter. I mean, yeah. you know, so anyway, it's, uh, I think that's, a lot of times nowadays the, the uh, promoters feel like they're really promoting a band if they put it on their Facebook, Facebook page. Facebook page, yeah. It's so fucking lame. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like there's no street work, there's no right. investment in radio or anything. So yeah, you know, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, so you know, with the just a couple more shows left in this leg of the tour, what's next for Ice Earth? Uh, the we're gonna have a little bit of a, a break here, and then uh, Europe. We have a we have a bunch of festivals and headline shows that we're doing, and that's about six weeks. Okay. And uh, you know, from there. We're really going to be we're going to be off for a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to be I'm going to be working on Demons and Wizards, but the band yep. will be off until um, probably early next year. We'll go out and do another second run here. In cool. North America. Awesome. Maybe January. We're talking about it now. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. So uh, you know, a lot of the music that you write for Iced Earth is has a foundation in the books that you read. Uh, is there any current reads that are you know striking up new music ideas for you? Uh, no, not really. Although a fan gave me this awesome. Uh, book on Texan history. Okay. Uh, just a few weeks ago, when we were down there. Um, maybe a week ago. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, so I've been reading that, and there, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. But I I don't really have anything cooking right now because I'm not even in that mindset yet. You know, and I'm, yeah. I'm not thinking. There's always uh, there's there are like ideas and things like to clear the way, for instance. That's bubbling in my head for like 15 years right and I never I mean I knew I was going to write a song about the Irish Brigade but yeah I wasn't gonna you know I, did, I didn't start working on lyrics or musical arrangements at that point yet this is just you know so there's little things like the Battle of Austerwitz from the Napoleonic Wars is an amazing that's a crazy story so yeah that's definitely going to happen someday also and it, it's just I'll know when I get into songwriting mode when the time's right right you know I don't ever want to like do it prematurely or whatever just do it when it feels natural and yeah it seems to work that way so but there's really nothing i mean like i said the next step is demons and wizards and that's um that's a different a completely different writing process than right what i do with ice earth because i'm working on the musical arrangements and then delivering it to hansi and he's working on at that point um the lyrics and the vocal melodies and whatever direction that he wants to go in lyrically that's our partnership you know yeah. he does it's kind of what creates the frankenstein it's the um, my arrangements and Hansi's lyrics and vocal melodies. I mean, I have written some lyrics in Demons and Wizards, but yeah. he does the vast majority of it. And it's the it, the way he crafts vocal melodies that over the top of my arrangements, where it's like that's what creates the Frankenstein. That's right. The <laughs> so it's it's a it's always fun to do that. You know? Yeah. And um, so that's that's the next thing creatively, and I won't even really start worrying about or thinking about the high store thing until we get closer to actually doing it. Do it later, yeah. yeah. So uh, speaking of Demons and Wizards, um, I think in an interview not too long ago, you had mentioned that the new album would be coming out in 2018. Is that happening? Do you have a date? Uh, no, I don't think, it, actually, we're, it's going to, well, let's see. It's probably going to, re realistically, because of the touring schedules that I have to deal with, it's going to be August, from August on for the rest of the year where I'll really be focused on. And we've got three songs going, so we're early in the process. Okay. So we've got quite a bit of stuff still yet to do. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I, I wanted, I was being a little bit more optimistic than realistic. Yeah. When it, it, the, the thing is that Ice Earth has been so busy, it's hard for me to really, I don't, 
I don't like to juggle too many things, especially when it comes to songcraft. If I do, then the music suffers. So I right. need to really be like off and in that meditative state where I'm, you know, left alone and focused completely focused. on music. And if I've got all this stuff going on with the new album cycle, which we are in, right. then it makes it hard for me to really be productive in, in, the, in the best way for the product. So, yeah. and I've talked to Hansi, and he's, you know, he's like no pressure, dude, just right. whatever. So it's it's going to be the perfect timing for me is going to be at the end of this year, uh -huh. and I expect that we will. Because once I get focused on something, it goes pretty quick. And with Hansi, he's got his schedule opened up pretty much. So I think 2019 is very realistic. Cool. So uh, when you're like working on music, you're coming up with some ideas. Um, what are the characteristics in that music that tell you like, hey, this is going to be a great Iced Earths tune versus, versus a Demons and Withered tune? Um, well, it's different because in Iced Earth, when I'm when I'm writing a song by myself, I'm writing it with Stu or with Matt in the past or whatever. Yep. It's worked in different ways. <clears throat> For me, when I'm working on a song of, with my lyrics, then I know at least what the theme or the title of the song is going to be. So that leads me in a direction of how I craft the music so that I can try to get it to sound. So I always right. want to make it so that even without the vocals, somebody can close their eyes and really feel like they're on a journey of whatever that song might be about. Okay, you know cool. I mean? Whether yeah. it's about the Irish Brigade or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. the story might be. And so that's my my way of, of working. And when I'm working with a, another person, like with Stu on this, he wanted to write a song uh, about the Vikings, so Great Heathen Army, and I was like, cool, you know, I can yeah. get behind that. And we talked about it on the phone, and I started putting together an intro and working on, on the parts, and it all came into line. But it's, it's really, I need to know... When working within Iced Earth, I really need to know what the direction lyrically is going to be so that I can make the, cool, the coolest soundscape possible for that lyrical passage, okay. you know, whatever it might be. With Hansi, it's a little different because a lot of that stuff gets decided later. So it's really just about trying to come up with cool musical arrangements that are what they are, and then he had, adds his thing in. It's, okay. It's not really, it's, a, it's just different for, because I don't write the amount of, I don't write as much in Demons and Wizards. I mean, I, as I do in Ice Earth. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a, yeah. It's a different thing, and it's a, yeah. It's a. If Hansi, you know, if we if we end up talking early in the process, and he says, "Hey, I've got this theme of a song," then right. that always helps me for sure. Because then I can go, "Okay, now I I got I know where my target is, and what I want to. I got to be able to. I have to be passionate about whatever subject it is that we're going to write about in order to create the soundscape that is convincing for people." whether there's vocals or not. That's right. the icing on the cake, but the music still has to speak. It's a big deal. Right. It's like the soundtrack of a movie. You know, If you turn that off, you're not gonna cry and you're not gonna get scared. You right. know, it's a giant thing when watching any kind of movies. You're not, it's the movements that, that happen at a subconscious level that people a lot of times don't really understand. And so yeah. it's really, to me, if we're going for a specific subject matter, we've gotta to try to take the listener on a journey that is as emotive and powerful as possible from an instrumental standpoint, and then the lyrics and the vocal melodies are just icing on the cake. Right, they're adding the story and, and yeah. interweaving the two things. Right. <clears throat> cool. So, um, you know, you've never had a, a problem with uh, being afraid of speaking your mind either about your political, ideological, philosophical views. Um, metal music has, uh, you know, is has a penchant for dealing with, you know, tough subjects inside the music. Um, do you think that that freedom of expression that it, that is in metal is what dr brought you know drove you to that that musical theme? Without and, a doubt. Okay. Yeah. And it's keeps it's you all, in that scene. It's all about the rebellious nature of it. You okay. Know? And I think anybody that just would you know that, that's what heavy metal is. I mean, it's anti-establishment at its fucking core. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. Come on, man. You know, so <laughs> so it's that's that's like a of course it's a. It's a big deal. It drove me. I mean, I've always been that way since I was a kid, and, uh -huh. um, and I, I always will be. <laughs> change, you know what I mean? Right. I don't care if I ruffle a few feathers. I really don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, it's not. I'm not here to please everybody. Right. That's not the goal. Cool. <laughs> you know, I'm dedicated to my songs. Yeah. To my my band and the people that I love, and if people get it, that's awesome. And if they don't, that's fine too. Right. I don't care. Yeah. So. Cool. Uh, so if you you know scan the interwebs on Ice Earth, you uh, always come across the great debate of the best singer for Iced Earth. Yeah. Uh, so now that Stu has three albums under his belt, do you think that that, that debate's going to subside? Oh, no. 
No, 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 never. It's never going to because, I mean, dude, think about how many years the, the Aussie Dio debate went on. Right. Or, or how many years there's still people who say Paul Diano's better. And I, it's, it's just, the thing is, there's, it's, humans are tribal by nature. And when you discover a band or something really resonates with you, then you sort of get attached to those guys. And I get yeah. it, dude, I love all of it. Man. Right. It's my, you know what I mean? I love all of the singers and they're, they're all cool people and they're all fucking talented as hell. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been awesome to be able to work with some of the best vocalists in the world, man. I mean, yeah, seriously Hansi included, dude, it's amazing. Yeah. Matt, Hansi, Stu, Tim yep. Owens. I mean, come on. Man. I know. You know. And even John Greeley was an awesome singer. He just, it was so long ago and we only, we only toured Europe then, you know, okay. only Central Europe. Like right. the band has grown organically across the planet. It's not, it's, we've never been, a, we've only opened for four bands in our entire career. You know, it's, wow. we're always preaching to the choir, dude. And that's the, which is kind of a bitch, but yeah. it's, it makes it harder, but it's grown from that, from the Enter the Realm demo, which was like fire over there. And we went over on our first album and toured with Blind Guardian was the headliner and we were their support and we killed it. We did four encores, man, the first <laughs> night in Hamburg. I mean, we didn't know what to expect. We're right. going to Germany and we're like, yeah. what the fuck? And the people are chanting our name and they, they say, Zuga Bay, Bay. It's <laughs> encore in German. And so we, you know, we're, we're back there looking at each other and one of the guys from Halloween's back there, he's like, what are you doing? Get out there. <laughs> we're like, what are they saying? You know, so yeah. it was... It was it was just a cr really cool, surreal experience, and the band has been successful in every every lineup. You know, yeah. I mean, every with every singer, it's all it's worked, and it's worked in different ways, and it's grown organically. And you know, the the thing is with the internet, and th that really pushed it, I think, into a, a global thing where the band can go to Israel and China and all of these you know places that. We, we would have never been able to do right. back in the early 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. I mean, it just wasn't even, it wasn't, it just, it grew, it just constantly grows, but it's happened very organically. Cool. So. Awesome. So, uh, Iced Earth, you know, was born in the home of American death metal. Um, did you ever think of taking the band in that direction when you guys were starting out? No. No? Not at all. No. Man? No interest in it, man. I mean, it's, I'm too, I mean, it's to melody too much, you know, and, uh, so from a musical standpoint and certainly from a vocal standpoint, it's a it's a big deal. Even though, <clears throat> like if you, if you the the band started, I started the band called Purgatory, and it we we went through a big change, obviously through those early developmental years. Right. Um, and we had a you know we had a hell of a lot of a lot of fun back in those days. But you can we we would do this very theatrical stuff that was for our level, you know, for a club band, but I mean, yeah. you know, we made our own dry ice machines and our own flash pots and our own drum riser and we had a curtain and we went out to a graveyard and we hacksawed this fence around somebody's grave and we built it to make a really badass drum riser. Yeah. We were wearing costumes and doing all this theatrical stuff. So the later part of the purgatory years, right, to, to when we changed to Iced Earth, it was a, there, there's still some of that remnants where it was really more about character stuff and you know it wasn't quite the horror show thing which came later yeah the horror show record but it's right. completely different than the old purgatory demo horror show right you know we had an original song called dracula and jack and all these but they don't sound anything like, like they did then horror show. Yeah, yeah it's completely they're different songs right. but it was, it's just been a dude it's been an amazing journey and but i've always been into the melodic thing and one of the things that after you know the early in the early early part of iced earth the what was happening in my head was moving at a very fast pace and melody was definitely a concern and wanting to go more in that direction so right in terms of vocal melodies so um you know that that's that's one of the reasons that changes happened early on um but you know we did we just we've done a lot of cool stuff yeah right. yeah well, and you, if you think about it, I mean, death metal kind of like took over a little bit for metal during those 90s they did. when you guys were trying to get established, uh, yeah. but you still persevered with, you know, with your style because melodic singing, you know, it wasn't popular for a while. Yeah, that's true. And, and that's the thing. We even noticed that in the Tampa Bay area. I mean, when we were purgatory and we were kicking ass in the, in the clubs around there and... Uh, then when we changed the name, and it was right around, it was, which was 1988, it was around that time that the death metal thing started to get bigger and there was more of a buzz. And then by the, you know, 1990 or yeah. early 90s, there was, 
you know, it's all it was. And that's what the majority of the labels were signing, you yep. know, so in the indie world. Um, but, you know, we did develop so much of a, of a commotion off of the Enter the Realm demo in Central Europe. I mean, Germany, Holland, Belgium, right. you know, those, that, that part of, of Europe was, it was like really a popular thing. And so we got, you know, album or demo of the month and demo of the year. And, uh, you know, and it wasn't cheap. It was like $10 for a cassette tape. Yeah. You know, so, but it was full color J card and everything. And it was done, you know, really top notch. And uh, so, I mean, you know, that, that spurred on enough interest for Century Media to be like, hey, there's something going on with this band. Right. It's not death metal, but that's cool. And they, yeah. they had, they had a couple other acts that were very different from each other. So, yep. Um, you know, that's that's the route we took. And Do you think that the uh, the state's following has caught up with the, the I mean, because you guys are, you know, ginormous in, in Europe, um, but the states have, you've got a really good loyal following. Do you think it's caught up to where it is in Europe? Uh, no. Okay. No, no. I mean, it's, in terms of passion, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, and in terms of numbers, no, it's not, it's not the same. And, it, you know, it's the states, it's just, a, it's a weird market. Very trendy market like the UK is. Yeah. Um, but the metalheads are, you know, they're they're definitely diehard. But like I said, Iced Earth has just never had the the opportunity to really be exposed in that kind of way. Now, anybody that's a real diehard metalhead, right. they know the band. Right. You know, they know who we are. But there's a lot of other people that could be into it that just aren't even aware. I mean, we see that all the time. Yeah. I never even heard of you guys. You have 12 albums out. <laughs> you know? Right. And they flip out when they start digging into it. But I, I don't know, man. For me, it's... It's a, uh, it's a dip, the, the loyalty wherever we go, it's unbelievable, right. like the passion. It doesn't yeah. matter if we're in Israel or China or Russia or Australia, or New Zealand, like whatever, all these yeah. crazy places we've been all over the planet, and, um, and the passion is still there. The numbers vary depending on the markets. I mean, you know, New York is always killer for us. Right. LA is always killer for us, or California, you know, and so there's, those are typically the biggest shows on a U.S. tour. Right. Um, and that's no surprise, I guess. They're massively populated yeah. areas, but uh, that's, it's just, I don't know that, you know, we, with, with constantly preaching to the choir, like, I don't know that it's going to really go any further. Right. You know? And we're, dude, we're cool with that. Oh, that's good. We got, we got a good, yeah, I was going to say, you got a good base. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not complaining it at all. And then, you know, the, the guys in the band, they love it, you know, they love being out here and doing this and we have a really cool chemistry right now. It's great. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, John, I just got one last question for you. Uh, what's your favorite breakfast food? Bacon. <laughs> it's the candy of meats. Huh? <laughs> it's the candy of meats. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm definitely a bacon guy. Awesome. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thanks so much for talking with us, man.